here we are. This is this is not what I expected to be doing tonight. Uh, to be to be totally blunt, we were to be to be totally honest with everyone. We were we were planning on doing a, uh, a end of year spaces on Wednesday night. Uh, one that by the original plan, we were hoping to have a lot of hope and excitement with with you guys as a fan base, with other people as a fan base. There was a lot of a lot of really good things here. At the end of the year, that we we thought that we're gonna take this fan base into a lot of excitement going into the off season, and obviously today happens. And today it is a day that I think we all expected to come at some point. Obviously, I, I don't think any of us expected Kim English to be here forever. Obviously. Uh, that's just, just an honest answer there. None of us, none of us expected that when he came on as a coach, none of us expected that when he came on as a young head coach, but I don't think any of us expected this to happen, uh, as, as quickly as it has, uh, you know, obviously this is, this is a, a pretty quick shift in what we expected for this off season. And and while we could say we've got we have absolutely nothing confirmed, there is nothing official right now. Obviously, this is college basketball; things can change uh, in an instant. Uh, what what we've been told from other people is that we are this is a done deal, and that Kim English is, is moving on uh, from. Uh, uh, from George Mason, and and he is going to become the head coach of the Providence uh, Providence College Friars. Again, we've got nothing confirmed. We have we have nothing on that, but we've been told, unconfirmed by multiple people, that this is happening, and and that this is happening soon. And uh, yeah, I mean this this. Uh, this is a thing that's happened. So so I think this is kind of what's going on right now. Uh, we have we have the great Curry Hicks Sage of uh of uh coach search season fame taking some small time to be here tonight if he wants to help us explain kind of how how that changed. We have Mason's recruiting. Uh he he's in here right now tonight. This is this is uh all available. Uh so, uh, Curry, thanks for being in here tonight. Thanks for asking me to come on. Happy to be here. This is uh, this is my favorite time of year, not not being in your position necessarily, although I, I do think you should look at it. First of all, yeah, thanks for having me. I, I don't know that this is t- – like, what makes you so convinced it's completely done? You may be right. I'm just asking. We, we've been told by multiple people this is, a, this is a done thing. And you trust all these people? I tr- the we have one of our big guys has said that he's been told by a Providence guy this is a done deal. Yeah, but like a lot of people, you know, I've heard a lot of things today, and I think there is immense mutual interest, and I think there's also a measure a level of panic on the Providence side. But I, I, I like maybe you don't care for my opinion on this. I I just think it's Kim English is a good coach, but I think you guys have seen him for two years and. Would you like? Would you hire Kim English to be a Big East coach for for a perennial yeah, tournament program? Yeah, you know, in, I, I get in twenty four hours. Sure. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think they're going to do a little more vetting. I I think that's fair. Uh, I'm I'm not going to try and use this space, especially since this is meant to be a George Mason space, to to comment anything about Kim English. Well, I mean, isn't I, I it kind of about know. Kim English though? It is about it is about Kim English. I don't want to. I don't want to. Trash Kim English. I I'm not trashing Kim English. Wanna... I, I opened by saying I think he's a good coach. Yeah, I mean, it, my 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 thing here is that I I am exci- I am sad he's leaving, and I think I think that's, that's kind fair. of where I'm totally at. Totally right fair. I'm sad he's leaving, and I think a lot of Mason fans are sad he's leaving at this point in time, especially. After I think a lot of the fan base had felt that momentum had been built, we do. If you're a Mason fan, 
please, if you have a comment tonight, please do. We've got Mason recruiting and Andy on both right now. So, but Curry to you from, from what you've heard, has this been it? How long has Providence known that Ed Cooley is out of there? And how ha, has Providence had this interest in Kim English for since they've kind of known that Cooley was gone? I honestly don't know. Um, my sense is they've known that Ed could leave for some time. He's flirted with departure on a number of occasions. And so any good AD always has backups in mind. Um, I have been led to believe by people I really trust that this picked up like almost immediately after Ed was in DC yesterday. Uh, and they, and that, but I, I suspect there were probably back channels there for, for, you know, at least a week and change, but I, I really, that's, that's purely not based. That is not based on anything sourced. So I, I, I have, I'm very confident they spoke yesterday um, at some length and um, then, then his name really picked up quickly. And usually when it gets to that many people that quickly, there's uh, some intent behind that. That's the kind of leak that doesn't just, you know, they want, I think to some extent, they probably leaked it robustly today themselves. Uh, and it came to me third hand, like after it came to Rothstein and the rest, um, because they may be a little bit of a trial balloon, just making sure that that was palatable to their fan base. I don't like, listen, here's the thing. Kim English, like every, like any coach who's coveted talks every day with his inner circle or his agent or whatever about what you know, what's happening during kind of the search season space, not literally the search season space on Twitter, but, um, you know, so it's not like, it's not uncommon for these guys to be entertaining possibilities at three, four, five, six, seven places at any given time. And anyone who thinks that they're just like, you know, fully grinding on the recruiting trail at the school they're at is just not in the know. So I, I wouldn't like, I don't know. I wouldn't lose sleep over the fact that he probably has talked to all sorts of people over the last um, several months. And that's kind of the, or several weeks in particular. And that's kind of the thing you get when you get like a, a young kind of anointed hot coach. It's just like one of the deals that, that goes, comes with it. I remember at UMass when we had Travis Ford and like, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's, you know, VCU eventually got sick of that. Uh, and that's why Mike Rhodes came in and sort of stabilized it. Although he, who knows, he could be gone too someday uh, or soon. But, you know, there was a kind of understanding there that like you weren't going to be Shaka, Jeff Capel, uh, Anthony Grant situation. Like you were going to stick around for a while because they were just sort of tired of that, um, that way of doing things. Personally, I, I mean, maybe I'm segueing too quickly here, but if I were you guys, like you've got, you've got positive momentum you probably are better off looking for the next Kim English than you are hiring, um, you know, someone in the, like in the retread Paul Hewitt mold. I think you've, you've had success with it. So stick with what, what's worked thus, you know, in the last couple of years. Uh, but that's all I got. Yeah. yeah all right. Well, th thank you for popping on tonight, Curry. Appreciate that as always. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Is that it? You got, you got anything else or <laughs> I mean, no. I mean, if you if we want to stay out, this is meant to be. A no, I know. I don't want to blow up. Well. Just asked me to come on, so I don't. I, if there's anything else I could help with, it, I'm happy to jump on. But do your thing. I think you guys are fine. Jason Williford will get a call. Um, v, you know, UVA assistant, longtime assistant there. Um, there'll be a bunch of other names that get in the mix. Uh, I think. Let me just ask you a question. Do you think Mason needs to get like an in-region guy? Because English was like Baltimore, yes. so it's sort of close. But do you, do you think that's imperative? I think it is. I, I think it's helped a lot on the recruiting sphere. And re I mean, David can talk a lot more about this. Uh, so if David, if you uh, for Mason recruiting, if you want to come on here and speak about that, but I, I think with him being from Baltimore and understanding the area, it's helped out a lot more on that regard. If if Mason recruiting would like to speak. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I was trying to get my uh, infant out of my lap. Um, yeah, I, th I think that would be um, imperative, uh, in, in my opinion. Uh, now, with our with our current class, uh, you know, we've 
branched out of the out of the region quite a bit. Uh, we have Chicago represented, we have Missouri represented, um, and then uh, Shenandoah Valley. But um, oh, and and also North Carolina uh, now with Jordan Marsh uh, joining the fold. But uh, yeah, w- Williford is a is a fantastic name. Uh, definitely deserves a call. Um, obviously, Tony Skeen or Skin um, of two thousand six fame um, with us. Um, a name that I, I was interested in, uh, after Paulson was let go was, uh, Christian Webster down at Virginia tech. He's young, uh, kind of the same, the same mold as, uh, as Kim, but, um, I won't go as, uh, as far to the, the sky, the sky is falling realm as, as Joe did. Um, it, it does kind of seem like it's, it's heading in the direction of, uh, of, of coach heading up to Providence, but, um, you know, there, there are several, um, attractive and, uh, well-prepared candidates that will be out there. Uh, and, you know, just like we did a couple of years ago, uh, go through the process, hopefully hire one. I'm, I'm on the, I'm on the same, the same track as it, it needs to be a younger, uh, guy. I'm not really interested in, in a, a retread, um, and and go from there. Keep keep it young. Keep it local, uh, and, and try to keep some of this momentum. Yeah. So so yeah. I th- I think that's. I really do think that's good, Brian. Uh, you're you're one of us. You're you're an OG and original. What's what's your thought after all the news today? <clears throat> um, I don't know. You know, I think it's been kind of a roller coaster. Um, you know, I'm just kind of like taking in what everybody is saying and trying not to overreact. But as the, the day goes on, it seems uh, more um, clear that there may be a change. So, you know, I guess what I'm most concerned about and what, you know, <clears throat> we've been kind of talking about throughout the day is, you know, how does, how does this, how does this partake? Like, how does this go down without, having an ad does that matter do i mean from what i've heard it's like the acting ad has a strong chance to get the job she's uh done a lot there's some some news that should be announced here shortly um and so you know i think it's it's really going to be about let's see how she handles this you know we're not we obviously can't wait to hire a new ad and go through that process before we hire like we need to be like recruiting right this second. So we need a, you know, an AD as of right now. And so that makes me think that we're going to promote this interim AD ASAP and then get the search going. Um, you know, hopefully we can pony up the money, but it's not sounding promising, um, which really would leave me <clears throat> pretty disappointed. Um, you know, there's been a lot said about turning this program around and, Kim English being here for five plus years and uh, you know, a lot has been sold to us that I would be pretty disappointed um, in this. Obviously I know, you know, would I turn down a a larger offer? No. So I'm not going to sit here and say like, you know, that he shouldn't take the job, but uh, I definitely don't think the job was done. Like, you know, it's a 120 win season and, and we're going to lose them. Like, at least you wanted to see like a tournament appearance or like uh, get to Saturday of the A-10 tournament or, you know, literally anything other than what we've seen. So I don't know. I, I'm, I'm definitely feeling pretty discouraged about it. Uh, being that we cover Mason basketball, this is going to be really fun at the same time. You know, we're going to be able to potentially be, you know, start our own coaching search and then also, uh, but, you know, going to hop deep into, into recruiting. So I don't, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen. You know, I, I put out there that, that uh, Dave Paulson wasn't going to get fired. And then he was like fired the next day. So, you know, there still things can happen. Um, and, you know, in that Paulson story, I mean, he was all, basically secured the job for another year and then it was taken away from him. So, I don't really know what's going to happen, but this is not trending in the right direction. And I would say that, you know, if I wasn't just like a burnt out Mason fan at this point, I would be in full depression mode. But I feel like 
I don't know. Did Kim English always have one foot out the door? You know, I, I feel like I feel like he gave us everything he got. Like he wanted to come in and change a lot at the university and was really focused on the student section and everything. Um, and so, but I, I, I always got the sense that, you know, last year he was potentially talking to other schools this year, he could potentially leave. And so uh, you can't, you can't knock the guy, but at the same time, did, did anyone feel like he was going to stay here for that long of a period? Um, so I don't know. I'm in full sadness mode. Don't know how I can, you know, what else to do besides try to enjoy it and just, relishing the fact that we're Mason basketball fans and it hasn't really been good in a while. So maybe we just need to lower our expectations. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think Brian, you bring up a good point about was, was this always a stepping stone? You know, what are the expectations? I, I think, you know, obviously the Larinaga era uh, sets up for a lot of high expectations and they, they haven't even been close to being touched since. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me that makes this feel rough is that the end of this season felt like such. Even though we we got ass kicked by SLU on on Thursday, and that was a rough, rough way to end the season. I felt like the end of the season, like steps had actually been taken, and I felt a lot of hope. And I think that's what has me down this bad is because if this happens, then uh, it just feels like it's a rip out the back, you know, knife in the back, basically. All the progress that I thought had been made, all the hope that I thought had been built up just ripped away from us like it was nothing. Uh, that that kind of sucks. You know what stinks? And, you know, I don't I don't really know what to think about that yet. Yeah, I I can't say that I'm I'm as doom and gloom uh, at the moment. I mean, it it is part of the business. I mean, he, like Brian alluded to, there were several reports last year of him of him talking to other schools. I know his first year he was at Tennessee for two years as an assistant. After his first year as an assistant, he was uh, interviewing with Southeast Missouri State, um, and then obviously the next year he comes here, and then uh, after year one he's um, he's either flirting with or being flirted with, uh, by a couple of, um, you know, bigger name jobs. And, uh, yeah, am, am I a little bit surprised that a, a program like Providence is going to go after, uh, a guy so quickly, uh, that, uh, hardly has a 500 conference record over two years. I mean, it's, it's not like he made some massive jump um from from year one to year two um it could have been uh there, there were a lot of close losses but there were also a lot of close wins um so yeah i mean that's a little bit i'm not going to say discouraging i'll say it's uh weird <laughs> I, I like there there's just there's so many others uh so many other names that they could go after that maybe have been a little bit more successful the last few years but again he's a for the same reasons that we were excited when he when he took the Mason job, he's he's young. He has an NBA pedigree. He is very good at selling himself. He he talks a big game, which sometimes uh, you know comes true. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, and I, I don't think that the the Rick Barnes irony here can be ignored. Uh, Rick left. Yeah. Rick left after. Rick got the George Mason job at basically the same age that that Kim did. Um, first head coaching job, and now Rick left after one year. Ke would be leaving after two, but they both went to to Providence. So um, I guess Kim should already go ahead and look at his house in Clemson, South Carolina, and Austin, Texas, because uh, he he should be there in the next few years. Cool. Um, but yeah, not not as doom and gloom. Um, it at, you know at first it was a little bit shocking. Uh, now that it, it seems to be trending in that direction. Um, you know, I've, I've moved on to, to try to find some of the optimistic points in it. Um, I certainly wish that Kim were, were going to be here for the next three, four years, build something, accomplish, actually accomplish something, uh, of note. Um, and, and then, you know, hopefully move on to a, a, a bigger job like, like his, um, like I guess he was hoping to, but, 
Um, if this is it, then uh, thanks for not a whole lot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, best best of luck up there. And uh, and let's go let's go get somebody who wants to make Mason their home for a while. Yeah, and the barn the barns thing if from what from what we've heard too about the barns thing is that this this all stems from Rick Barnes. Apparently, Providence, you know, knowing having that connection to Barnes and talking, and Pro- the Providence administration talking to Barnes and asking for a suggestion, and Barnes immediately suggesting Ke for this. And, you know, that mean Barnes obviously had a huge suggestion to KE to come here in the first place. Barnes Barnes said to KE that this was a good place to go and that he should he should be, you know, coming off and doing this. And now it seems like the Barnes giveth and the Barnes taketh away as he suggests that KE go to Providence now only after two years at Mason. And to be totally blunt, not that much accomplished. Yeah, um, you know, it's. Uh, I think still think it's a little early. You know, I think we're going to have another spaces when uh, if a news is announced, and that may have a different vibe than this one. Um, you know, I feel like with all the news, I mean. You know, Rothstein, you know, some some other big names are, are definitely talking about it. People are in our DMs talking about it. So it definitely feels very real. Um, but like I said earlier, we just don't know yet. And so, you know, it's we're going to try to have, you know, have hope here. Um, but <laughs> I think it's, you know, we will have another spaces when it's time to say how we really feel about how this is going to go down um and i uh, know just to, to david's point like i just don't know how how we can't be doom and gloom at this point we're looking at potentially three coaches in a row none of them to to even sniff the tournament or sniff the nit really and how could we like sure yes we could go get a tony skin and it could be nostalgic and it could be fun and good vibes and we could, you know, continue to build, but like, can't go three coaches, three hires, and like the best we can do is fifth in the A10, and like not be somewhat doom and gloom. Um, so, you know, I just, I'm just trying to stay rational about it. But I under, I completely under. If you're, if you're over there, like, you know what? Fuck this. You know, this is some bullshit. Like, I completely understand your feelings you know it's okay to be upset like you know some people put a lot of money into this some people put a lot of time some people are skipping their like you know things with their family to be at games or the amount of effort that giant killer puts into this like it's okay to be upset and you know you don't have to be doom and gloom but you know if you're butt hurt today like from all the news and reading the way all this unfolds when you go to Curry's Twitter and there's debates going on about Kim English leaving. And, you know, many of us are kind of in tune with what's going on to Georgetown because it's right down the road. I live in DC. You know, I remember growing up, my, my brothers were rocking Georgetown gear. I mean, so we go from like, Oh wow. Well, Georgetown's hiring a guy that wasn't a part of that George Thompson tree to like, Holy shit. Now Providence is going to take our coach. And it was a whirlwind um, from from kind of start to finish. You know, like I didn't see Georgetown hiring Cooley as going to have any effect on Mason. And so maybe I should have, but, you know, I'm just kind of here to say, like, if you're sitting here listening to this and, you know, wondering, like, what the hell is going on and you're upset and, and you're in your feelings, like, that's okay. Um, but I would question, David, like, how are you not, doom and gloom like what what are the optimistic points about this outside of like getting it obviously we cover this it's kind of fun to cover or we get to dive into recruiting like how could you not be like doom and gloom to some degree i mean look again it 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 sucks but it's not the end of the world coaches leave programs every year uh some after some after one year um i mean if I think Petey uh, tweeted something about Kyle Neptune earlier. Now there, there was a lot of 
continuity with the staff that stayed behind at Fordham. Uh, but you had a young coach come in and kind of revitalize them to a point um, and then leave after one year to take, obviously, a, a much bigger job. And it got better. It, it got even better. that The momentum that, that was started there was continued. And again, a, you know, um, Ergo was, was on that staff. I think one or two others that are on the Fordham staff um, – stuck around but um again man this happened this happens every year uh with with several schools uh with the way that the portal is now you can reload quickly if you get the right person um it's it's kind of exciting to have a coaching search not gonna lie about that um i I, again I, i wish that we weren't doing that for another three or four years but it is what it is um but I mean, I, I think being on being more on the recruiting side of things, I I feel like I have to have a little bit more of an optimistic point of view on it because if if I'm going into it, not not that what I do or say or think has anything to do with how uh, successful Mason is in recruiting basketball players, but um, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep a a positive mindset on it because we do have four guys that are currently committed. Um, I'm hoping all four of them end up on campus. Uh, you have a, a transfer portal that has a thousand people in it right now. Uh, if you land the right guy and they have relationships already established with a lot of the guys that they've recruited over the years and a lot of the assistant coaches, uh, possible assistant coaches that maybe they've worked with at a stop or they've just gotten to know from being in the same league or, or whatever. Um, this, this doesn't have to feel like it's going to be another massive rebuild. Uh, it could turn around at the drop of a hat. Uh, we don't really know until we, we get the person in the seat and figure out what they're going to do. Um, but no, I'm not, I'm not too upset right now. Now, if, if, it does end up coming to fruition and we lose nine guys off of our roster, uh, then yeah, that's going to be a little bit rougher. Uh, but that hasn't happened yet. So, um, all we know right now is that it seems to be trending in the direction that, that KE heads to Providence. Uh, I think that you can point to maybe one or two guys, two or three guys on the roster that, uh, may not stick around. The other, other ones will be question marks. um, so in, in, until that happens, until we know exactly what we're getting into here, um, I don't see a, a massive point in, in thinking that the uh, the world is ending because we don't know yet. We could get somebody that comes in and, and keeps Justin around. Maybe it's somebody that Justin just vibes with. Um, Ronnie sticks around. Ticket decides that he still wants to spend his fifth year in Fairfax. And uh, the four recruits that we have signed – want to get to campus and, and wear the, the green and gold and, uh, and, and we keep moving forward. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna burn the house down yet. I, I, I don't think there's a, a huge reason to yet. I feel that. Um, I think it's like, you know, it's important to, uh, get all opinions here because everyone's going to feel a little bit differently. I think what, what I've, feel the most concerned with is just like you know having Hewitt not work out having DP not work out both of which were let go and then your third coach is a guy that comes in and leaves after his first 20 win season and a blowout loss to St. Louis who then gets blown out in the next round I feel like it's just you know that's what makes it tough for me and that's why I can I can vibe with the people that are panicking and you know a lot of people grew to really like coach English on a personal level he was of our age um, was into similar things had a style that uh, you know many of us you know have ourselves uh, like to play golf just like you know just some some things that we didn't get with Dave Paulson and I think uh, that there's some there's some reasons there that people just were you know we're close to Kim English like he invited us to every single practice always made time to talk to us uh, just it was just a, it was just unique um, in that way. So, if there's any Providence listeners in here, 
uh, you're definitely going to get a guy who's super open um, and to the public and is super welcoming. Um, but, you know, I, I think we see a new a speaker, Jason, um, can come in. Yes, What's up? Hey, uh, how, how are you guys doing tonight? Appreciate the moment. I, uh, I myself am a battered and bruised Friars fan this evening, so it's kind of interesting to hear your guys' uh, perspective on uh, our potential new hire. I guess it's just uh, – interesting to kind of hear more about how he connects with the fans. I think, especially now with Cooley leaving, I think the ability to connect with donors is going to be super, super important to try to kind of rally people around this program. As silly as it seems, I already know people whose college decisions are now on hold because Cooley's leaving Providence. Um, He was more than kind of just a basketball coach to the school. He was like, you know, kind of the, the face of the school. So I think it's going to be pretty crucial for whoever steps in to be able to kind of, obviously you're not going to fill those shoes right away, but to grow into those shoes, I think somewhat quicker um, than they might be ready for. And I guess with him and maybe not having a ton of success, I guess I'm just a little too nervous that, you know, the network casting here is not as wide as it should be. He seems like someone who might be a good hire and someone we might just look into, but it does not feel like he should be a primary candidate for us. Just looking to kind of get a little bit more from you guys. I would totally agree with that. Um, I would characterize him as a potential hire, um, or, you know, based on his, his potential. Um, and you know, he, as it's been said in here, um, he's a very good salesman, uh, of him, of himself. Um, he, he has, he has an exciting story and exciting pedigree. He, he certainly, you know, in his first couple of months here, he definitely, made huge splashes uh on the recruiting trail uh, one one in particular um so yeah i think that's i think that's what it's going to be i also think uh, again that uh the barnes connection can't be ignored no, uh it, i forget how many it, years barnes was at providence before he left to Clem- left for clemson but um clearly he still has uh some friends uh, up in that area. I guess that just worries me with the young AD kind of, you know, and I know he's kind of reached out to a few people. He mentioned Doris Burke and one other, I forget who I think he, he reached out to. So obviously people with, you know, some, um, you know, some standing in the program. I guess I'm just worried that he might be taking other people's influences, in this case is Barnes, uh, a little bit too seriously. I think that this should be a nationwide search. And, you know, I forget who it was. I think I was in spaces last night and someone mentioned Randy Bennett. I don't necessarily see that, but I wouldn't be opposed to exploring an option like that. Um, You know, I, I just worry that, you know, this, while he might be a good hire, I just feel like it's something that, you know, I, I worry that they're just not forcing themselves into, but they're just, I don't know. He, he strikes me as an, another coolie is really kind of what he strikes me as someone who can kind of come in and like you said, sell somebody and kind of take over a room. But I don't know. I wonder if you maybe try to go a different route and just try to break the mold rather than trying to, you know, redo it. I, I could hop in here. I, I could say that I'm a Mason fan but as a providence from a province perspective why would you be excited about this uh, i mean is he going to be a better coach than cooley probably not uh you know and and who is he going to be a better coach than? i mean there's a couple of former a10 coaches that's in the, the big issue. east that's the issue there's there, there's there's no options that's i think i mean hurley at uconn uh, i mean uh, even um oh my god i'm blanking on his name right now uh at villanova um, Neptune. Neptune, Kyle. La- Neptune. Yeah, thank you. Neptune last year, I think kind of the consensus around the A10 was Kim English came in with the biggest amount of fanfare, but Neptune looks like he's probably the better coach. Now, obviously, we've got a year in at Villanova, and that's, you know, mixed bag at this point, but yeah, I- I'm honestly, I'm it could be something where I think that I- I'm not going to sit here and say I'm ready to show Kim English the door. I'm not trying to sound like that. 
But at the same time, I also am not getting the logic from Providence's angle. I'm really not. Yeah, it just seems like he's just like, okay, Rick Barnes said Kim English is a guy, and that's the guy. It just, I'm nervous that a guy who, you know, I'm not going to say he isn't proven, but kind of isn't really that proven. Well, no, I think, that, I, I think I don't... you've got a fair point there because, I mean, I think that, I mean, uh, this is this is something that uh, Hawk could probably speak to a little bit more. But, you know, in terms of Barnes lobbying for uh, English to get the Mason job, and if you really kind of take out the, the last, like, six or so winning game streak that Mason had, we were kind of looking at a mixed bag of results through two years. And, I, I mean, you can cut that a lot of different ways. I mean, Oduro was hurt during the first portion of the year, so there's an argument to be made that the win total could have been better. Uh, but, you know, through getting close to the end of two seasons here, I think that there was a little bit of a, well, we don't really even quite know what we have quite yet. And, uh, you know, relative to the last two coaches, uh, you know, the winning percentage is higher, uh, but it's not it, it, it's better than than uh, Paulson is. But it's it's not dramatically better than Paulson, um, you know, with year three or four looming at Mason. I think that people have the idea that maybe there would be this trajectory, but. Um, so far there's been a little bit of a mixed bag in terms of recruiting and who's coming back. We just don't, we simply wouldn't even know. And that's if Providence wasn't even in the picture. Yeah. And in terms of people who, uh, and I want to respect Joe's wish of trying to keep this as much of a Mason space as possible, but in terms of who Providence could, um, could reach out to and how, and how Kim, a, you know, a young coach who, uh, frankly, hasn't been extremely impressive at his current job could, be looked at as one of the top two names automatically for this. This Cooley news has been out there for quite a while. So there's a very good chance that if the current Providence uh, AD is, is any good um, has been putting feelers out there to different higher profile coaches to see uh, what the interest level might be. I just and... don't know if he has been. He strikes me as someone who has been caught very off guard by the news. Maybe that's just him playing his poker face and trying to rile up Val Ackerman. And I think he did say he has reached out to her a few times over the past weeks. Val Ackerman is the commissioner of the Big East, for those who don't know. Um, so maybe he really has had his, you know, hands over the situation. I'm just, th- these candidates don't you know, they don't strike me with any level of excitement. And I think when you lose a guy like Cooley, you have to try to, you know, fill those shoes with someone who can get the fans. Okay, we lost Cooley, but we got this guy. I just don't think this is a type of hire that, you know, is going to do that to the fan base. Not to say it won't work. It might. It might be a great hire. It might be the best hire ever. But I just, I don't know. It, 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 I hate to say you need a name, but I feel like in this sort of situation, I feel like you might you might need the name. Yeah, I don't I don't know what name you are you're That's pulling the issue. point I, I, just, I mean Shrew, Shrewsbury I seems like he is Notre Dame heading or... to Notre Dame. Um yeah. I do have I have a a opinion quite it, this this has there's no like rumor mill bearing to this whatsoever. I'm just I'm purely curious. Yep. If if John Becker, the the coach at Vermont, he's been there since 2011. If he were rolled out as Providence's head coach, what would your feelings be? Um, you know, I would not hate that. I think he's someone. I think an important part about Providence, the school, is I feel like someone has to come in and know the significance of the region where you are of the conference. I feel like he might have a better grasp of those things than someone like English would. Um, so I, I wouldn't hate that. In fact, I think it's a little bit more, um, I, I think it might be a little bit more intriguing, honestly. Well, be ready for, uh, for KE to harp on the one year that he played in, uh, prep basketball in Massachusetts as his um, yeah. top region. He, he's gonna, I thought you were going to say the one year in the NBA. No, no that was two. That was like one and a half. That was like one and a half. Um, but no, the the one year he played, uh, I think it was Notre Dame prep um, in, in Massachusetts. He'll, he'll bring that up as his type of the region. You know, you, Jason, you asked a little bit about um, like his involvement you know, an, an alumni and kind of the, the community, like he came out guns blazing, like, like 
you know, like going to re- restore the glory years, going to bring in those guys. Cause you know, we really feel, I really feel like, you know, Dave Paulson didn't do a great job connecting with former players at Mason. And so, you know, first couple things Kim English was saying, I mean, at his introductory presser, I mean, there was more 06 guys than we had seen all of Paulson's, you know, coaching time here. So, you know, it came out like really like, plus he's got a lot of social media followers on both Instagram and Twitter. He was super active up front, hitting the recruiting trail hard. We have a ton of good high school basketball around here, like some of the best in the nation. He was hitting those games. He was utilizing coaches that had played for Mason that are now coaching locally. So there was a lot of things to be like super excited about. But as time went on, you know, this in this upcoming recruiting class, we didn't necessarily land someone from, you know, right around the DMV, uh, D.C. area. And, you know, I didn't really see as much alumni, you know, a couple of times here and there, you know, it was nice to see. But I didn't know if it was uh, necessarily sustained and maybe it's not sustainable, but he definitely came into the program um, super, uh, super energetic and you know, making a lot of promises. And quite frankly, you know, Kim English is a guy that's uh, been very open with us. Um, We have built a relationship with him at this point um, where, you know, we just text. Um, I didn't text him today. I thought about it, but didn't think what good it would do. Um, You know, but, you know, there's many, you know, he's made friendships with fans. Uh, so, you know, that's what I think, like, some people are allowed to be, you know, super upset about. And I think this is a, yeah. this was a situation in which, you know, he was super open with us, uh, super friendly, um, you know, would take some of us out to, you know, for dinner or, you know, so he, he came out like really trying to get to know the community. Um, and speaking of, uh, of 2006 and a lot of the, the alums, uh, just want to, Make mention, don't want to put him on the spot or anything, but Gabe Norwood, welcome to Spaces. We see you in here. See Mr. Lamar Butler in here as well. Oh, I didn't see Lamar, but also welcome to him as well. But, yeah, uh, you know, I, I will say that that was something, and, you know, it, it does seem that, that Brian, I think, is absolutely correct that there were some things that I think that, you know, I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not trying to, to knock Kim. I think there's probably this area where, this seems like a little bit of a premature move uh, and I'm not sure that it's going to be right for Providence, but I don't have a crystal ball. I mean, I could be completely wrong, but it did seem like Brian said that in terms of upping Mason's social media game uh, being a little bit more current, shall we say, and having the connections, not only to uh, some of the former players, but in, you know, the coaches in the area as well. I think that's dead on. Yeah, no, I think that's, you know, it would be an important and, you know, a, piece of the job that you you can't discount the providence like i said cooley's contribution to outside of the school just the community i mean you know providence is the hottest ticket in new england in the winter i mean there were games going for 225 250 bucks this season and that's not an over exaggeration i mean that is crazy for a regular season basketball well you can get a mason ticket for about 10 bucks yeah, so, you know, it has become more than just a basketball game for a lot of people. And Providence is a blue-collar city. I mean, it means a lot to the people. So I just, you know, it, it there are some positive things that I hear from him. And, you know, we're a long ways away. Who knows? Maybe All right. this doesn't yeah. become a, a, a Thank, Thanks for coming on here, Jason. Thanks it. for that. I thanks for it. thanks for coming and speaking your mind appreciate here. Uh, I, I, see, I see Petey Buckets in here. I see Daniel in here. Chris is in here. Grant, Jai Lewis is in the is in here. Jai Lewis, thanks for coming on. Uh, you know, but Petey, Dan, if you guys want to speak, you know, Kaufman, Mikey, if you guys want to speak your mind, speak your mind. Uh, let us know. But Joe, I think I think people are too shook right now. Like I, I th- yeah, I, I mean, I, think I get people it. Are too scared. Like you can't. We can't really speak to anything. That, there's no announcements. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got a couple DMs, but like, we don't, you know, there's not, no one wants to be like, oh, well, fuck him English. And then he's like, oh, he actually stays and got an extension. So it's like, it's kind of a hard time to, to have this discussion, yeah. quite frankly. 
And I don't think we're going to get many people that are willing to, to come on and, and give their opinion. Um, but I do. I, I don't know if that's necessarily where it's going to be at in terms of where I think there'd be levels, levels of disappointment for yeah. sure. But I, I don't think that, you know, like you said, I and mean, there's lots of stuff that in terms of every interaction I've had with Kim, uh, which is, you know, probably pales in comparison to what Joe and you have had, but, you know, he's he's always been very nice, very open um, in terms of, you know, having us at practices, things like that. So, uh, you know, there's I don't I would really <laughs> question somebody who is really like fucking English. But, um, well, don't, don't, you know, don't look I, at I really DMs. think don't look at your DMs. Uh, well, you know, that's on those people and they need to kind of get a grip, touch grass and all that. But, uh, you know, he's he's been nothing but in, in, in my opinion, good for the university. It, it would be. In some regards, a shame to not see what he could do with another three or four years. Uh, but at the same time, I, I just don't think that, you know, after two years, we can really sit here and say that there's been a whole lot um, that we're missing. I mean, I'm a 2006 grad. And so, I mean, I remember when Coach L left. It's like, I remember somebody texting me when I was in law school. So Coach L to Miami, I was just like, what are you talking about? That's not going to happen. Well, look at that. At least that, at least yeah. that made sense. But I think. <laughs> it didn't make sense when it broke, but it makes sense now. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I think Coach Al was destined to take on a, a school like Miami and has shown it. Brian, what's up, man? Um, you were you, you asked to speak a little bit. Uh, how, how are you feeling? I'm, I'm feeling fine. I mean, like, if this happens, we all knew that this was a jumping off job, which is what kind of makes it weird for Providence because, like, Providence is also just a jumping off job with much, much, much bigger expectations. Like, I don't, I don't think that I, I think I tweeted this earlier, but like this season was good, but it wasn't great. We were non-competitive in two power five games. And in two years, we were what one in nine in tournament style games, including the MTEs against not great competition. Um, there's definitely momentum. And there's like, I, I think that that coach English with time is like, is going to be a great coach, but he's 34. Um, there's a lot of dudes in the Big East that at this point in their careers, and, and like as far as like, I'm, I'm sorry, not, not I don't mean to stumble, I've had a couple, but like <sighs> he's forgotten more about basketball than I'll ever know. And there are a lot of coaches in the Big East that are have that same level over him as far as coaching goes at this point. Not that he'll ever know, but then he knows right now. He's a 34-year-old second year of his career head coach, and the Big East, like that's that's big boy basketball. Not that the A ten isn't, but there's there's levels to this shit. Um, if he does decide to move there, best of luck. He's been great for the university. I've enjoyed his two years. It's been a lot of fun, and the hype has been super fun. I would love to have him back because I think he could build into being an awesome A ten coach, and then move on and do great things. But it, it just it feels like this is super premature. And if he has the same level of success at Providence over two years at Mace that he did at Mason, then he's going to be in having a kind of having a rough time there. Like there's expect that program has expectations. We're thrilled with a 21 season. Brian, and Brian, you've yeah, had a, you've yeah. had a lot of fun the last two years. Uh, I mean, compared to the previous eight, really? Like, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, I mean, I, I, again, I don't want to, I don't want to rehash all the ghosts of the past, but going from the hype of the two year season to coming out of the gates and losing our first three to American and whoever Navy and whoever the hell else, like the last two years felt like, I, I, maybe I was a little, a little over dramatic, but with a lot of fun, but it's been, it's been fun. And there's been improvement. Improvement year one was just an improvement in an immediate talent. Um, the improvement in year two was we look like we can compete consistently with the big boys. Um, we're still losing games we shouldn't lose, but we were winning games that were tough to win. Um, and again, a lot of that came with we're building with a 33-year-old coach that as he improves at his craft, the school will improve too. And I think that Mason was a great place for that because, again, our expectations here aren't super high. Like, I know we all talk about the L days, but re in reality, we're kind of a one coach program. Like the L days are the glory days and there aren't any others besides George Evans back in the day, um, which that's a tough, that's a tough place to be as a program. And that's fine. Like I'm, I'm a Mason guy through and through. And I think that we, we definitely have the potential to improve, but jumping ship to Providence, like, 
uh, again, uh, just our, our buddy Jason here, I believe his name was, that was talking about it. Like, the idea of a $200 ticket to a Mason game is absurd. And people that are spending 200 bucks on a ticket aren't going to like going to an MTE and losing three to a terrible Boston College, a pretty bad Belmont, <laughs> and I can't remember who else it was, Buffalo. Doesn't um, sound like too those fun, are. Brian. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. But like again, we had our we had our nice little run here to end the season. Like we've got we had we got to watch what who's going to go down as an all time Mason great and Josh Oduro. Um, tickets become a, like a real fan favorite in the way that outside of Otis, we never had one of those guys during the during the Paulson years. Um, basically, I, I felt like there was momentum, but I don't think there was so much momentum that we're going to be completely hamstrung from this. Um, if he does come back, awesome. I'd love to see. I want to see what he's continuing to build, but I'm not like not super doom and gloom. <laughs> I guess that like, like over the last 10 years, this is about what we've been. And so it's not like we, we shot up. We're just knocking on the door of the tournament. Now it's being ripped away from us. We were kind of just slowly building momentum towards from where we had been. Yeah. I mean, personally, Brian, I, I don't, I kind of see it as more of the same. I mean, I don't see these huge jumps. I mean, year one, we, played a walk on as like our seventh guy sometimes first off the bench um and then in year two we're kind of sold as like the super deep team that in all honesty may have been you know too many guys involved in the rotation so you know i'm not i'm not seeing these like huge strides and i feel like if i'm losing my coach after two years uh, i would want more than i have right now and so that's why i guess that's that's why i'm upset i guess um, because sure. I, I want sure. and I, I guess that's I guess that's kind of where I was going with like with Providence like like why I don't just not seeing why this makes sense for them um, like kind of what I said about people paying $200 for a ticket like if, if he goes out there and again has that kind of MTE where they go 0-3 against three pretty bad teams and like those those people are going to be beaten down the doors um, of why is this the guy we brought in to follow who from everything I, I'm not a Providence fan but from everything that I've heard that Cooley was Cooley was the Providence guy. He was Mr. Rhode Island from there. That's like, that was his home. Following that seems like a really tough act. And again, if this does happen is like, kind of just doesn't feel like a great career move. Like you're just ratcheting up the difficulty level before you've really accomplished anything. And like, I don't know, maybe the stakes of failure at Providence seem a lot higher than the stakes of mediocrity at Mason. Um, cause he would have a super long leash here and I don't know that he has going to have that kind of a leash at Providence. Um, does Josh, that make sense? Or, or Brian, what are you drinking? Uh, that's a, that's a nice little old fashioned. Nice. Get after it. I'm pouring one myself. Jo- uh, Brian, we got to get to Josh. Been, yeah, been of course. To speak, but do you feel to, to stay on as a speaker and interject where you need to, uh, Josh easily the top 10, uh, Mason basketball fan that I know of. Um, Josh, Definitely. how are you feeling, buddy? I'm doing okay. Um, my worry isn't so much about Kim. Um, I think he's a he's a very good coach. I think he's gotten better um, during his two years here at Mason. And, you know, I would like to see him continue. Um, my fear with losing him is more of what happens with the roster. Um, you know, how many kids do we lose? How are we going to rebuild? I just, I think back to when, when Paulson took over and I mean, we were literally picking up, um, kids that kind of had no business, uh, being in the A-10 and I just, I, I kind of fearful of something like that again. I, the, the one big difference is now we have the portal, um, and having that, while it's going to be easier to get uh, players to come, it's also going to be easier to lose players. Um, so I, I just don't want to see a huge roster turnover, and I think that's a that's a possibility. Um, but as far as as Kim, you know, he, he's a very good coach, but 
there are also a lot of very good coaches out there. I think there's a, a young coach uh, in College Park, Maryland, that would fit great here. Um, but it's just more my concern is is the roster. The other thing is, I think when Kim came to Mason, there was a lot of, of changes that needed to be made and not just specifically on the court. I think Kim brought like a social media presence that we hadn't seen, um, a transparency in the program. You know, we're seeing videos of, uh, of practice and in summer that we'd never seen before. And I, and I love that. Um, and, and if Kim leaves, I think, you know, that doesn't have to go away with him. That, that can stay. So from a fan who has gotten used to some of that stuff, um, I'm just hoping that that stays. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we keep some of the, the social media team uh, here at Mason. But um, I'm trying not to freak out. I know there's, there's other good coaches out there if this does go through. Um, but the, the roster is my main thing, keeping those, those guys that committed to us, keeping them here, um, and hopefully keeping a lot of our current players here. Yeah, I would, I, yeah, I would so, say you have, your, you have your work cut out for you, Josh. That would be, that would be my, my take, is that get ready to watch a lot of film. Um, yeah. Because that's what I think is going to happen. And, you know, I think, just to kind of counter you a little bit, I, you know, that first DP year, I mean, he did bring in Otis and Grayer, right? That was both two first year guys. Um, you know, not, not necessarily like a great class, but I think we got, there's opportunity to, to snag some people and, and also hit the portal. Um, but I definitely think we're going to see massive roster turnover. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't remember what the, yeah, I, was, I don't think that's, a but we had, we had a large number of kids that, that first year that we brought in. So um, we'll see if that happens again. That's, that's probably the more scary part of this is, is not necessarily losing KE, but I think the worry of, for me at least is just having this roster start all over again. That does spook me a lot. You should be spooked. Um, Kauf- yeah. Kaufman, uh, have you taken a cold shower yet? <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have much to add. Everyone's kind of mentioning all the things. Roster. Um, you know, remember, we're looking for an AD. So <laughs> I don't know how that'll impact anything. But um, that certainly can't help. Um, you know, from my understanding, it sounds like, you know, Mason's going to do the best to try to keep them. I'm sure they will. Um, so that's at least a, you know, glimmer of hope. But it's, uh, you know, it was kind of inevitable that Kim was going to bounce at some point. I was always hoping that um, it would be after you know, some other, you know, some really good things happening at Mason um, kind of joke with some friends about, you know, master plan of a sweet 16. And then, you know, we go hire uh, somebody else. Um, but regardless, it, uh, it, it just, it, it's a waiting game. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll say it's, it's, uh, it's upsetting, but it's, the environment, you know, we went young up and comer and um, yeah, he, he's been a breath of fresh air to, with Mason and just interacting with everyone. And, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, that, that is kind of the case of where we're at right now. Clearly uh, Mikey, you've been, you've been muted here for a while. You're kind of next in line. If, if you're on the line, What's what's kind of your thoughts about this? I think it's just kind of like, you know, holding your – how we're, we're holding our breath. It's like, okay, we're seeing the reports and, you know, I understand that there's still a lot going on with, you know, the tournament's still going on. And, you know, it's okay, well, you know, we're seeing all the reports. What's the timeline for this? And that's what, what has me scared most for not having a, uh, a full-time AD where, you know, if – what is our what is our main priority when it if and when things break 
Um, and then also, you know, like we, we kind of touched on, you know, development. Like I really felt like, especially towards the end of the season, it felt like, you know, it, it, it seemed like visibly that we could see, you know, the development of the players, the development of the program. Um, where do we go from there when, once it breaks down? That's just kind of where my thoughts are and just, you know, how long can I hold my breath? Um, and, you know, I, I, I come from a Big East family. My uncle's a, you know, a Providence season ticket holder. So, you know, I, the first thing when I saw this, you know, I asked him, all right, what are your thoughts? And you know, he kind of echoed everything else. Everyone said, you know, good guy, too young, not really proven yet. Um, and, you know, I'm, that's and I, I feel like, too, I was starting to buy into the OK, well, we'll let the program develop to then get the fan involvement. And, in. you know, that's that's the thing I care about. It's the thing I've been, you know, I enjoy most about games is, you know, the fan experience. Um, and, you know, if, if we're going to I think Kim was doing a great job in trying to build that up. But it, it really felt like that, you know, our, our students and like even our, the fan experience was just kind of dead sometimes this year. So I don't blame him for trying to go to a program where I know it, it'll be more raucous and that'll be like what he wants. Um, but how do we form a fan identity if now we're, we're kind of having a power vacuum at the top and no AD, no head coach, new coaching search. So just kind of my thoughts into the void. It's not great, Mikey. Um, <laughs> I think it's uh... – you know, and honestly, we needed you this year in that student section. You know, feel free to go back because oh yeah, <laughs> once once they allow me to bring beers in the student section, I'll be back. You know, well, we got something we got something to campaign for. Mm-hmm. Um, we got Grant looking at chat too, so I'm going to allow him to hop on. There's no more soothing voice on this spaces than Grant's voice, so um, hopefully he can he can calm me down. Grant, are you there yet? I think some people are having trouble um, hopping in. Something might be screwy with the Twitters. But we're, we got to just keep it riding. Um, you know, Joe, you're a student. You yep. haven't really experienced much success to this, to this yep. point. Um, when this started to circulate early on, you were, I'd say, pretty upset. Have you calmed yep. down into the news now as it uh, seems more clear, or are you still going to go full panic once the news is announced? <sighs> yeah, I, I think I've calmed down a little bit. I mean, what what is is what is is at this point. So, you know, if, if he's gone, if Coach English is gone, he's gone. And, and, and that's just kind of how life is at this rate. That's kind of just how it is at this point, and that, that's what it'll be. But I, I can't lie, man. Like, this, this stinks. I, I was happy. I was really excited. Uh, you know, we're like you said, like you said earlier, there, we, we we'll have to talk about this again. We're, we're going to have to talk about this again. If, if with, like some people have been telling us, if this is happening as quickly as it may be happening, you know, we might be back on this subject again in, by the end of the week. So, You know, it it stinks. We're we're probably gonna be talking about this again sometime soon. So I think I think like you said. Uh yeah. I, I don't know where we I don't know where I stand yet. I've calmed down, but I don't know where I stand yet. I think that's a good place to be at. Um, you know, this is probably a good place to end it. Hour long space. We're gonna do it again when if news is announced um so thanks to everybody we had the most people we've ever had in here we had a bunch of former players we had Andis, the independent recording artist that went to mason that's blowing up you know we had curry who's doing search season so we had a lot of a lot of different people hop in um and so i uh, appreciate everybody um i think this is a good place to 
go ahead and call it quits. Joe, would you agree? Absolutely. I think I, well, there, when, when the time comes, Oh, let's, if, let's see if it'll allow Chris on here. Yeah. It's not really letting us. No, uh... oh, Chris, Chris, are you there? I'm here. Oh, hi, yeah. Chris. Um, see, yeah, no, I, I listen to everything and I see that you're signing off. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just going to echo what everyone else is saying, but I, I am also not ready to sort of throw it at a hundred percent. Like nothing's been finalized yet. So I'm, I'm just going to wait it out and be patient. And if I need to vent, I'll vent later. But for now, just stay calm, stay cool, stay collected. It's fine. But is, is this karma for making fun of, you know, roads this morning? And, and saying he was selling his house, maybe. Like, I don't know. But, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. It, it, it what, feels like What it, terrible timing was yeah, that? Yeah, it feels like it. Yeah, and VC fans are going to jump all over it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 I feel like a tad defeated if everything is true. Um, just partially because, you know, heading back into like a rebuild after no real success is just like, uh, <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. It's Philadelphia Flyer syndrome. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll let everything kind of shut down, but um, you know, just kind of keeping my fingers crossed at this point, um, ignoring the uh, sources and everything, and just keeping my head buried in the sand. I think <sighs> that's a, I think that's a good way to go about it. Um, you know, I mean, there's no, we're not breaking news. There's you know, there's no reason to, to full on panic right now. Um, but, you know, I, I would say that today was not fun when categorizing, you know, fun days in sports. Today was not enjoyable. Um, and so, you know, I, I appreciate some people coming here, coming in here with optimism. I mean, my guy, Ron A, Ibrahim in the building, just got to give him. Give him a shout out. I uh, went to the A10 tournament, took all of our pictures. Always does a great job, um, you know. And it, it's just, it's, it's, it's just, it's tough. And, and I think it, it's been a tough I think day. It's something that, that you said a couple times, Chris, is that wasn't this expectation? Um, you know, like was it? You know, was were we always uh, potential to be a stepping stone? And is this something that? We're going to potentially talk about every single year. Um, so I think that there's – Yeah, if, 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 if he doesn't leave now, it's just going to be a tradition every year because I think – Yeah, he, at that he rate. sources love to just kind of like, oh, is Kim in the mix? Or, you know, And I don't know who keeps throwing his name in the mix. Maybe it's Kim. Maybe there's validity to these rumors, but um, I just think he's going to be a popular name because – you know, he, he's one of the youngest coaches in, in you know, back college basketball, and he's done some good things here, not anything that's, you know, completely righted the ship at all, but it feels like we're heading in a good direction. Like, he's a good motivational speaker. He's done, like, a lot of good things for the image of the university. Um, so there's, like, a lot of things that are that's going on off the court that feels like it's heading in a good direction. Um, and there's obviously good things that are happening on the court, and there's optimism but it's like optimism is one thing but like results are another so like does a biggie school hire off of optimism like it's just kind of like this feels like weird i don't know it, it, but yeah i i would get it too like i understand like we we've always kind of slept with one eye open kind of expecting this so um I don't think any Mason fan has felt comfortable in any off season and we won't. And, and it, you know, I'm not going to even speculate about like future potential hires and all that, but it, I do think um, if people want to suggest like, Oh, we, it could be this guy or that guy. Like you have to wonder from the university's perspective, do they want to go through this again? Do you want to get a young, sexy hire and potentially have him get poached after two to three years of maybe success. So I don't know what the next hire looks like because Kim from DP was pretty stark. Um, 
you know, Hewitt to DP was, you know, kind of whatever. But I, I'm curious to know where the university goes after this, especially with no AD in place right now. So, you know, for, for, for everything with that, though, I think what, what I am more confident in than under maybe when we hired from went from Hewitt to DP under Cabrera is that I, I fully believe that President Washington is invested in this program. I, I, I trust President Washington. If, if this is something that can be happening, whether is an AD or not, I trust in President Washington to be here and to commit to having a program that is good. He, he, I, I, I trust in him on that. I tr- as a student, I believe in him in that, that he is someone who wants to make sure that as our university, our basketball program is a highlight of, of this school. And I, I believe him when he says that. And whatever happens, I trust him to make the right decision along with whoever is helping him with that in where, wherever we go from here. I trust him. Yeah. I do. I want and, someone to hop in the spaces and say, Kim English isn't going anywhere. That's what I'm hoping for. Can we keep the spaces open long enough to where someone's like, hey, you guys are idiots. The news isn't out, and this man's here to stay. So Think, if, think if, about it, though. We're, we're having a spaces and emergency spaces based off of rumors. Like, And I get it. Some people, they have, you know, stronger rumors and sources than others but i'm just saying nothing's final nothing's been final and all we've heard is one side of providence is looking at at kim it's not we haven't seen anything that kim's flying up to to you know rhode island and meeting with anybody yet so again this is this is a an emergency spaces based off of one side of some rumors so um do I sound like, like I'm trying to talk myself out of this? Yeah, but a yeah. little bit, yes. <laughs> but I mean, that's what it is. I mean, we're discussing some rumors and some sources and whatever. So it's tough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this, this it, it was a, it was a rough afternoon when I saw the news. It, it it shook me out of what was a pretty what has been a pretty good day, and and. Like I, because we we none of us no one expected that news to pop up. Uh, Brian touched on that earlier, but no one no one expected that news to just pop up randomly today. And it stinks. This 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 stinks that we have to be talking about this. I I wish we could have just gone on with what we had planned for for Wednesday and the hope and change that we we were excited for. Yeah, because we actually do have some cool things coming down the line. Uh, we got someone to hop in and do our. Uh, did Mason win? So if you don't follow that account, now is a good time to go to Did Mason Win on Twitter. We're gonna start win posting. Today. <laughs> We're gonna start posting multiple scores from different sports. Um, so that that should be really cool. I got a guy who's gonna do that. We got a, a new videographer uh, that that Liam's gonna mentor. A new photographer that Ibrahim's gonna mentor. So. Giant Killer's still going, and we're going to be here if you need to vent or if you yeah uh, if you want to you know be optimistic. You know this is a this is a space for you to to do whatever you like. You know I think, um, you know I think it's just it's just more it's par for the course of being a Mason basketball fan now for a while. Um, and so I mean, there's so many fans that don't even remember the glory days. Joe, Joe has not experienced a single tournament appearance. Uh, so, you know, it just kind of feels like more of the same. Um, you know, we're kind of beaten down and uh, we need some stability. And, and hopefully if Kim stays, that's him. And if he goes, the next guy wants to make Fairfax his home. We need a guy that wants to make Fairfax his home. I need a guy that wants to make Fairfax his home. So that's what I'm rooting for. Everyone's like, you know, we got to do this or that. The program's got to do this or that. I, mean, I just want a guy that wants us. I'm not asking for too much. Um, so hopefully in our next coaching search, we can find that. If, if now we're going to get out of here and end this, unless you got something more Jonesy or Joe, you want to say anything else? No, I mean, I, I, I've said what I'll, – I'll say a lot more on – 
whenever we get a resolve to the storyline. No, I mean, and, 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 you know, maybe we wake up tomorrow and Kim comes out and definitively says, I'm staying here. And, you know, we all rally behind it and it gets us jacked up. And, you know, he, he wants to make Mason the Gonzaga, the East, or we see a presser and he's coming out and saying, look, I've accepted the job, like farewell. And, you know, we start our search. So, you know, I mean, if he if he holds a presser tomorrow, I mean, I'll, if it's on we're campus, cooked, yeah, we're cooked, and I'll I'll be there, and I'll and I'll we'll be cooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, never change. <laughs> I, I I I I I realized how how what how that sounded when it, when it came out of my mouth. I I, I realized how that sounded. Joe has been a breath of fresh air uh, to our content all year long. Um, if you haven't yet, check out our YouTube at Giant Killer. Uh, he's got videos in the replies of this of the spaces. When the news drops, you know uh, you know he'll have a new segment out. Um, yeah, going at it. Uh, I want to say uh, shout outs to uh, to my guy Jason. Uh, I got a chance to to meet him um, at the Fordham game. Uh, just want to, want to say what's up to you, buddy. Uh, it's good to see you in here. Um, and then some, some mainstays, uh, Lindsay, Dana, uh, two that are, that are often hopping in here. Appreciate you guys. Chris, of course, um, huge Mason basketball fan. Appreciate you always kind of swinging by our spaces. Um, and, and I think this is a good time to end it. Look for another spaces if, and when we get the final news. Thank you guys. All right.